What's up everyone, I'm Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial we're gonna see how to handle signal events. So sig int, sig term, things like that, using a ZX script. Um, so these are events that would typically come up when you hit control C on the keyboard, or if you initiate a graceful shutdown event using a some kind of process kill method, um, and all of this using ZX. Um, so stay tuned and see what we're gonna be up to when we come back. Welcome back everyone. Like I said, we're gonna be using ZX scripts. Um, so this is kind of like Bash, but it actually is in JavaScript. So we're gonna be using JavaScript, which wraps Bash commands. It's a different kind of scripting language. So up on my screen, you'll notice that I do have Visual Studio Code open. Um, I do already have an example MJS file. This is our uh, JavaScript file that we're gonna be using. And I do have two terminals up because one of these terminals is going to run the script and the other is going to handle our processes. And we'll see that more of that when it comes down to testing. So what we're gonna to wanna to do first, assuming that you already have ZX installed. If you don't have ZX installed, you're gonna, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to head over to Google, search for ZX and install it. It's very easy, you can do it with NPM, uh, but that's out of the scope of this particular tutorial. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and define the, the environment as ZX. I'm gonna say uh, hashtag exclamation mark and I'm going to say user slash bin slash env ZX. Um, so that means that we're gonna be using a ZX script. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter just a few commands. The point of this tutorial, it's not to be complex. Uh, we wanna make things as easy as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dollar sign, back tick, and I'm gonna say echo, and I'm gonna say hello world. So all this does is prints out hello world uh, because we wanna see that it's working correctly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a try catch block. So I'm gonna say try, and I'm gonna say await, and I'm gonna say dollar sign, back tick, sleep 100. So I'm gonna sleep it for 100 seconds. And the reason why we wanna do this is because we wanna simulate both of the signal events that we plan to use in this tutorial. The sig int will be based on the control C command. Um, and that should be, 100 seconds should be plenty of time to be able to do that. And then the second one, we wanna be able to get the process this, that this script is running. And then we wanna kill it using a sig term. Um, and that may take more than a few seconds. So 100 seconds is more than enough time. Now, because I'm doing a try catch, I'm just gonna catch the error. And if there's an error, all I'm gonna do, and this time I'm gonna say echo, and I'm gonna say error.message. So you could easily use echo, or you can use the dollar sign echo like this. Doesn't really matter, that's out of the scope of this tutorial. Um, so I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna run it just to show that it is working before we progress to the actual capturing of the signal events. So I'm gonna say uh, dot, and I'm gonna say example dot mjs. And permission denied, well, I forgot to add uh, execution rights to this file, so I'm gonna say chmod, and I'm gonna say plus x, and I'm going to say example.mjs. Now, if I run that command again, it should work out fine. Yeah, so it's saying, hello world, uh, and it's sleeping for 100 seconds, so it's still running. I'm gonna kill it with the command C, and uh, nothing nothing else is happening here because we don't we're not telling it to do anything. Um, so this is where these extra um, signal handlers or uh, signal event processing happens. Now, if you're familiar with bash, you might be familiar with the trap command. Um, so I'm just gonna add a comment up here of what you might be familiar with. You might be familiar with trap, and then it would look something like this. You would say echo. You might have it print out sig term, and you might exit after that. And uh, this trap event is going to trap the sig term event. And you might do the same thing for sig int as well. So I'll just put it out there so that way we have record of it. This is going to be sig int. And likewise for any other signal events that you would want to capture. Um, so you could potentially use the trap command inside of a ZX script, uh, but it's a little easier because you do have access to JavaScript now. So instead you could use what you would typically use in JavaScript, and that would be the process listeners. So what we can say is we can say process dot on, and in this case, we're gonna listen for the sig term. And if sig term is encountered, we're going to do some logic. So the logic, in this case, we're just gonna echo it out. We're gonna say echo, uh, we're gonna say sig term, 
And in the in the event of a SIG term, we want to be able to do a proper shutdown. Um, so when we're done and we're finally done with potentially closing our database connections or our application server, things like that, uh, what we can do is we can say process.exit. We're gonna do the similar thing when it comes to SIG int. So I'm just gonna clone that line there. And this is going to be a listener for the SIG int. And again, SIG int is for the control C. I'm gonna echo out SIG int. We don't need the process.exit because this is more of a hard kill command here. Uh, so I'm gonna save it and we're gonna try it out and see what happens. So I'm gonna clear this terminal and I'm gonna run it again. Now you'll notice it's running, it's sleeping for 100 seconds. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say control C. Now you'll notice inside of my log here, it did print out sig int as expected. Uh, it also caught an error because um, we have a, a catch inside of this try block because sleep uh, did not succeed. We, we stopped it immediately. We did kind of a hard shutdown of the script and it printed an error. Um, so this is to be expected behavior. So now what we wanna do is we wanna test out that sig term. Um, so I'm gonna clear my terminal. I'm gonna run it again. So it's running. I have 100 seconds to do what I need to do. I'm gonna go to my other terminal and I'm gonna say PSA. Now you may have different commands depending on if you're on a Windows machine or a Linux machine. Uh, for Linux and Mac, it should be the same, uh, but definitely check out uh, whatever kind of online documentation you need to get the job done. What I'm looking for is anything that's currently using ZX and it, it kind of cut it off here, um, but uh, what I'm looking for, it probably says example.mjs. So this is the process ID that I want. So I'm gonna copy it. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clear this terminal and I'm going to say kill S uh, because I want to pass in a particular signal with this kill event. I'm going to pass in a sig term and I am going to pass in the process ID. So I'm going to paste it in. Now when I hit enter, you'll notice that sig term appears in my log because the sig term event was received. Uh, it did not throw any kind of error message because a graceful process kill happened. Um, and it really depends on how you've decided to set it up. Uh, but that's why we got different events or different uh, results depending on the sig int and the sig term. Um, and it's it's as easy as that. So I mean, uh, we just captured some signal events uh, typical to control C or a graceful shutdown. Uh, this could be useful for a variety of things. So for example, let's say that you have a Node.js application and uh, I don't know, you're bundling it with Docker or you're bundling this MJS script with Docker and uh, you wanna be able to handle some kind of shutdown event when it comes to the container shutting down. And I've used this before. So Docker initiates a kill command, um, but you have some cleanup to do inside of your script. So what you can do is you can listen for these events and then do your cleanup in that sense um, to get the job done. So, I mean, there's a variety of use cases. It's really up to you. Um, the point here was that it's not supposed to be that difficult. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it wasn't. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it useful, please leave me a like on the YouTube video and then subscribe to the channel. Um, it just takes a second, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything and it really does help me out a lot. Um, until next time, I'll see you on the next video.